<sighs> Take a deep breath with me, my dear viewers. The intro has already been played. No, there is no cold open for this video, for we have quite a list on our hands. So I ask you once again, take a breath with me. <sighs> okay, so we have Parasite, Attack on Titan, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, Ghost in a Shell, Devil Man, Death Note, Black Butler, Dragon Ball Evolution, and of course, Avatar The Last Airbender. For every Alita Battle Angel, Alice in Borderland, and Speed Racer, and yes, I will argue you to the Shadow Realm that that is a good movie. The few and pretty rare live action anime adaptations that have any form of semblance of the grace and craft from the original media it's adapting from, always giving the shy but dissipating ray of hope that we might actually know what we're doing over here in the West, we release Cowboy Bebop. What the fuck? And listen, as I say in most of my videos, film is art, subjective. So I'm not saying that if you just so happen to like any of those shows or movies that I just so happen to throw into the trash bin, that's quite all right. And while this isn't a video where I'm going to sit down and pick apart each and every single problem or aspect that I have with these select few shows, it's more of a broad and more generalized question that I'm sure most people can engage with. Anime weaves such as myself or otherwise. The question at hand, and I'm sure most of you have figured out by now, and hopefully those gears are turning in your head to help me come up with an answer. Who are live action anime adaptations even made for? Who is the target demographic for a movie such as Dragon Ball Evolution or a show such as Full Metal? What is to gain from even attempting such a feat? And have we here in the West simply fallen off of the map so hard in a sense of our creativity and competence that we can't even get adaptations right? Fuck. And while I understand that I literally said less than a minute ago that this was supposed to be more of a focused and more generalized question while I proceeded to ask about three of them, but the main question at hand being, who are these made for? The question came to mind after the Netflix announcements Bungle or Nando Bungle, I don't really remember the name, surrounding their much anticipated and pretty expensive release of the live action One Piece and another attempt at a live-action Avatar The Last Airbender, and while both seem to be pretty close to the chest, swearing up and down to audiences that they claim to stick as closely and faithfully to the source material as possible. The problem is, we've heard that before, and to be honest, at this point, it's relatively obvious what anime excels in, and there are simply attributes or elements of storytelling that our creativity, or at least the people in charge, aren't privy to, or are given to us in rare occasions, but we'll get to that. Out of all of the styles, genres, and stories that anime has to offer that can, or I may even say succeed, as a live-action anime adaptation like Bochi the Rock or Vinland Saga, that actually involves the people in charge doing the necessary groundwork, research, and care to actually pull off such a momentous feat that those two animes have managed to pull off in the community that they're in. So the decision to go with the adaptations of Avatar The Last Airbender and let alone One Piece is a pretty baffling decision in my eyes. But I don't know, that's also giving the brain dead shills over in Hollywood the benefit of the doubt that they actually know the incredible animes such as Vinland Saga and Bochi the Rock even exist. But getting back to Avatar The Last Airbender and One Piece, these are two animes that one, have a tremendous level of support and a fandom built into their already existing medium, but two, strive in the attributes, aspects, and creativity of storytelling that I mentioned before, but just not in great detail. And while this is a mostly subjective and opinionated-based video, as I said before, whether you happen to agree or disagree, I wanted to mention that beforehand, before I go into greater detail about those said attributes and aspects and the creativity of storytelling that we here in the West seem to be lacking. With the three main supporting aspects being world building, character writing, and what I believe is the most important, expression. World building is pretty self-explanatory, and we've had great examples of it in even our most modernized times of entertainment with movies like The Lord of the Rings, shows like the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones, and even the creation of the MCU, phases one through three, of course. World building is a crucial and important element of a show or a movie simply for the fact that it's one of the most immersive attributes and connections a show can have with its audience. It's why an anime like Attack on Titan will always win debates like the worst anime verse to live in, because people know the world, 
they know how it functions, not only for our main characters, but for the NPC civilians in the background that aren't even important enough to have animated faces drawn to their slender man ass heads. And while world building might seem like one of the most trivial elements of storytelling, look no further than the lack of a clear timeline in recognition of character events by their counterparts post-endgame in the MCU, a horrendous plan of attack in the now desolate wasteland that used to be Lucasfilm, and the fact that the DCEU is in the final process of being erased and rebooted for a new person to literally attempt the same exact thing that they attempted around a decade ago. And the funny thing is, all of those aforementioned reasonings and explanations could also be applied to the second aspect of storytelling I believe anime is superior in at least recently, and that's character writing. As with world building, I don't have to lay on a silver platter what the hell is wrong with the character writing over here in the West. It's truly atrocious. Character tropes, character traits, arcs, and development gone to the wayside, replaced with gender, race, and identity. And while yes, all of those things are cool and fine, as a biracial guy myself, I can confidently say that most normal people don't care. The problem is gender, identity, and race aren't character traits or personalities. Being black or being a woman isn't a character. It's a description of a character. And a pretty surface level one at that. And while not too long ago it didn't really matter that Superman was white or that Blade was black or that a fictional mermaid happened to be animated as white in its first big screen adaptation, it's pretty obvious that we lost track of something along the way. Take Avatar The Last Airbender, for example. All tribes and nations that are based off real-life Inuit, Chinese, Japanese, and Tibetan cultures, respectively. And that was relatively obvious to the fans of the show. The point is, while it was obvious to the fans the differences in cultures, philosophies, and ideologies in the world of Avatar, that was never the focus of any of the characters whatsoever. Because being of Inuit descent isn't a character trait for Katara, or of Japanese descent for Zuko or Azula. But yet here in the West, we can't seem to even differentiate the basics of character traits and character descriptions. So how can us, the audience, really have any faith of having characters with depth, art, or growth in any of these live-action anime adaptations? At the end of the day, while world building and character writing could, on rare occasions, come out of hibernation here in the West, what live action will always lack, no matter if it's anime in the traditional form from manga or Disney's live action adaptations of old classics, us as humans simply lack expression. While expression could, and in the sense of this point, can be used very vaguely to get my point across in the quickest and most concise way, this cannot be translated. This cannot be translated, and this definitely cannot be translated into live action. Expression is what made the character of Miles Morales such a relatable and fan favorite character after only two big screen appearances. Into and Across the Spider-Verse encapsulates everything that this point stands for. Having characters in animation express their feelings, inner thoughts, motivations, tone, and body language to name a few are simply things that feel impossible to capture from a live action point of view. Because we as humans are simply anatomically limited compared to what we can draw or render on a computer. So when it comes to the quirks that make Luffy, Luffy, or the cute faces that Tanjiro and Nezuko make whenever there's downtime in the episode, the screaming hysteria and unbelievable trauma that you can see in the eyes of characters like Subaru, Sokka when he's high on cactus juice, or even the body language of a more realistic show like Blue Lock is unlikely to translate well to a live action setting. And as mentioned before, that doesn't mean that not all anime is not live action translatable. There's just obviously some that were made to be watched the way that they were originally made. And I don't understand or see why that is such a hard pill to swallow for our Hollywood executives. I mean, look at Flounder. Look at Simba. Look what they did to my boys. And people signed off on this. Like, what the fuck? While this is definitely not a video to dissuade people from watching the new live-action One Piece or Avatar The Last Airbender, the trailer was fine. I just don't see a large demographic of people that asked for this that sustains the reason for its creation. It feels like here, especially in America, for better and literally mostly for worse, Hollywood is starting to recognize anime and manga as the art that it is. And as always, 
they want a piece of that pie, no matter how much they fuck it up. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you made it this far, like and subscribe to the channel for that really helps out a smaller channel such as myself. Again, I'm not here to dissuade anybody, and before you ask, yes, I do touch grass. I just happen to watch anime as well. I love all forms of media, and in a perfect world, everything will always be as great as intended. But we don't, and that's why we have Dragon Ball Evolution. It'll always put me back in my place. Make sure you guys comment down below your thoughts and opinions. This is definitely more of a think piece, and I don't really believe I've done anything like this on my channel so far. I'm interested to hear what you all think. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.